hi there welcome to this video on design patterns in this video we will look at all the different design patterns that are present in object-oriented programming I mean we would really focus on the gang of four design patterns but we would take a completely different perspective on it we would not really look into code but we actually will look into real-world examples so we'll take each pattern and we'll compare it with a real-world example uh, let's just take an example let's say I want to talk about a mediator pattern a mediator pattern the real comparable real world example to that is an air traffic controller you have about let's say 50 different airplanes flying in different places in India think how complex it would be if they have to talk to each other to decide the route they need to take to decide when they have to land at a particular airport that's where the air traffic controller comes into picture the air traffic controller acts as the mediator all the flights would talk to the air traffic controller and the air traffic controller would guide the flights as to which route they can take when they can start flying when they can land and all this kind of stuff so we would use real world scenarios like this to understand all the design pad creational de design patterns deal with creation of objects how you can create objects how can you how you can efficiently create objects what are the different patterns which are related to that those are what are the creational patterns we would get started with the creational design patterns the most important of the creational design patterns are highlighted in the screen right now those are prototype builder singleton and factory there are multiple variations of the factory pattern abstract factory factory method and other stuff let's get started with the prototype pattern so the prototype is the first of the creational patterns so what is prototype pattern what is it related to so in summary prototype pattern can be defined as a fully initialized instance to be copied or cloned okay sounds complicated let's make it simple let's take the example of a chess game in the chess game we have a initial setup there's a particular place where the rooks have to be there is a particular place where ha the bishops have to be king queen and the knights and also the pawns so this there is a specific initial setup that is there for the chess game so creating this setup in let's say in a, cl a class in an object would involve some effort so a chess game let's say I'm implementing a program for a chess game in that kind of a game I can store the initial setup of the chess game as a prototype so I can have the initial set up as a prototype and whenever somebody asks for a new game I can clone this and give it back so this is a prototype pattern so a prototype pattern is used to create a copy of a fully instantiated in fully initialized instance so that's the prototype pattern so you just like the chess game where you instead of doing the initial setup again and again we reuse the initial setup there might be other places in while we are doing software where the initial creation of an object might be very time consuming I might need to talk to an interface and get something in these kind of situations I would go for a prototype pattern I would do the initialization of the object once and later I can use the object for uh, cloning so in such kind of instances where the setup of an object uh, involves some amount of effort you can create a prototype of that particular object and whenever a new object needs to be created you can clone the existing prototype and keep returning it back so that's the prototype pattern now let's go on to the next one the next one is the builder pattern so the builder pattern is basically uh, uh, used when there is a complex object structure like in object oriented programming when we are using domain driven design or something of that kind we have a 
composite structure of objects so if let's say I have a multi course dinner a multi course dinner would contain a drink a starters main course and a dessert so these are the different parts of the class for multi course dinner so the creation of this particular class would be really complicated so in those kind of situations we would go for a builder so we would try and separate object construction from its representation the representation of this dinner is that it has a drink it has starters uh, starts might have multiple options and a main course and a dessert however to construct this we would really provide a simple interface so somebody who wants to take a multi course dinner would just say I want this this and this and we would take care of constructing the entire objects for that so we are separating the creation from the internal representation even though the internal representation is complex we are providing a easy interface to the outside world and that's where the builder pattern comes in so the builder pattern comes in when we want to hide a complex internal structure from somebody who is trying to use the interface to create an object so separates object construction from its representation so that's basically what the builder pattern is all about let's now move on to the next one which is the singleton pattern singleton pattern is almost the uh, simplest of all the design patterns uh, in a singleton pattern the most important thing is the fact that you can only have one instance of that particular class so there are a lot of circumstances where you would want just one instance of a particular class let's take a real example a president of a country there can only be one president in a country so that's a good example for a singleton and uh, I mean if you look at Java the system class is a good example of a singleton a Java JVM would run only on one system so system should be a singleton you cannot have multiple systems so sing this is a very good example of a sim singleton so singleton is something which there can only be one instance of the only thing which you need to be really uh, careful about is that when you have multiple JVMs running the same program then you would have one instance per JVM so even though we call it a singleton it's when the program runs on multiple JVMs it can still have multiple instances in this in these different JVMs. so you'd have one instance in each of these JVMs and also there are a few uh, things that you need to be concerned about uh, implementing a singleton the first one is the const you should definitely make the constructor private so for a singleton class it's better to uh, make the constructor private uh, if you are interested in how to implement a singleton good singleton you can look up effective Java there's a very good way of implementing a singleton using enum however if you're using JE 7 then you don't even need to worry about uh, implementing a singleton it has a at singleton annotation so there's an annotation called at singleton in JE 7 which you put on a class at singleton that's it you have a singleton class you can also have additional options to customize it like at startup at post construct what do you want to do do during the initialization goes into the method which is annotated with at post construct at startup indicates if you'd want to load this singleton at the startup otherwise it would only be loaded when somebody in uses the singleton and also you can have relationship between different singleton objects so you want a singleton object A initialized first and then B and then C and it depends on can be used to uh, create these relationships not really important but if you are using JE7 probably you can look this up more and also singleton objects should be avoided as much as possible because they make code very difficult to unit test so if you use singletons then your code becomes very difficult to unit test so you should try and avoid singletons as much as possible one another good uh, inst uh, good place where you have singletons is spring in spring almost all the beans that you create are singleton by default so that's very uh, good to know so there you go that's the singleton 
pattern. In a singleton pattern, basically you have just one instance of a class per JVM. A good example is java.lang.system or all the beans when you are initializing them using Spring. And also remember to uh, have a private constructor and you can look up effective Java for uh, how you can use a, a singleton, how you can create a singleton using an enum. It's quite simple actually. Now let's move on to the next creational pattern. The next pattern we would be talking about is the factory pattern. We would talk about a specific uh, instance of a factory pattern called the factory method. So we'll do a change here and we'll look at a piece of code to understand it better. So what you're looking on the screen is a simple example of a factory method. So you have a person factory. So this is the entire code highlighted. So you have a person factory where there's a get person method and it's accept, accepting a parameter called gender. Based on the value of gender, where if the gender is M, it's creating a male object. Else, it's creating a female object. So all the creation, the instantiation logic for the male and female, for the person object is present inside this particular factory. What this helps is in reuse of it. So once I have a factory, I can use it any way to create different persons. I can have male, female, uh, different, uh, like uh, later if I want to add uh, more stuff, I mean, <laughs> uh, yeah. So if you, uh, in other circumstances where you have different varieties of things to be created, this helps you in making it uh, much more extensible. And also the other important thing is the user of the get person method doesn't know that there's an ex male class or a female class present. He only knows about the person class. So whoever, whichever method calls the get person method knows that there's something called a person class, but it doesn't know the existence of a male and a female. So you can even hide the existence of certain classes and in there. So the factory pattern is, this factory method pattern helps us to create a instance of a single family of objects and can separate the instantiation and also it can separate the existence of this object so that tomorrow I want to change this male object to something else. I want to create a new class. I can do that without affecting the other methods which are using this. So that's the factory pattern, factory method pattern.